What you hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Dragnet, brought to you by Chesterfield. This is the best, Chesterfield. And the time to change today. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a burglary detail. You get a call to meet a fire inspector at a burned-out home. There's reason to believe the fire was started by a burglar. Your job, investigate. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law to an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Wednesday, November 4th. It was cool in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch out of burglary detail. My partner is Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Bernard. My name is Friday. We were on our way out from the office. It was 9:12 p.m. when we got to 2607 West 50th Street, the scene of the fire. No signs here. Just the fire must have been in the back of the house. Huh? Yeah, that's the way it looks. Hiya, Joe. Oh, hi, Tom. You know my partner, Frank Inspector Strader from the fire department. Sure. Hi, Hello, Frank. Sir. Been some time since we worked together, Joe. Yeah, over a year, isn't it? Yeah, about that. Oh, what do you have for us this time, Inspector? Easier to show you. Come on back. All right. Most of the damage is in the bedroom. Started in the closet. Yeah. Did burn through the next room, though. Little girl's bedroom. Mm-hmm. Here we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Burned bad, huh? Could have been a lot worse. Neighbor saw the flames through the window. Must have seen it right away. She called us, and the engine company got it out before the whole house was gutted. Mm-hmm. Was the place locked when they got here? Yeah. Had to break through the back door to gain entrance. All right. Now, where do we fit in? Well, we're pretty certain the fire was started deliberately. Oh. I was checking. I noticed the window had been tampered with. Come here, I'll show you what I mean. See the lock? Yeah. Yeah. Looks like it was forced, doesn't it? See here? Screws are pulled right out of the frame. Yeah. Glass is cracked, too. Yeah. Any chance your boys might have done this? No, I checked that angle. The only place they tried is the back door. Uh-huh. Was the window open when you first saw it, Tom? Yeah, just like it is now. Raised about an inch. Frank? Yeah. See these marks here on the sill? Uh-huh. Probably made when the window was flushed. Huh? Better get the lab out here, I guess. Huh? Yeah, I'll get it. Phone's in the front room near the table. Thank you, sir. You been able to contact the owner, Tom? Yeah, he was with his wife and little girl. Got here just about the time they had the fire out. Took the wife and kid over to his sister's place for the night. Well, did he know if anything had been stolen? Didn't ask before he left. He said he'd come back as soon as he could. Well, you got any ideas? <laughs> well, I'm sure the fire was set. It might be insurance. Maybe a pyromaniac. Chief trying to cover something. Mr. Taft, this is my partner, Sergeant Friday. I do, Sergeant. How are you, sir? And you met Inspector Strader. Yes, sir. How are you? All right. Go back as soon as I could. The wife and daughter are pretty upset. We understand, Mr. Taft. She didn't think about it tonight, but she will tomorrow. Now I'll be in for it. How's that, sir? About the insurance. What about the insurance? Well, I don't have any. I can hear her now. She'll be up one side and down the other. You don't have any fire insurance on the house at all, huh? That's right. How about personal property? Mm-mm. No, my wife's been asking me to take some out. Maybe I would have, but she wanted me to get it from her brother-in-law. Maybe I would have, but you never saw such a one-way guy always looking to feather his own nest, you know the kind. Yeah. Like I was painting the kid's room, you know. Think you give me a hand? Uh, you bet he didn't. So what happens? I got no insurance. Uh-huh. Now, Mr. Taft, we'd like you to do something for us if you would. Sure thing, as long as it doesn't cost me. It's going to put me in the hole, but good. Hey, what is it? Would you check around and see if any personal items are missing here? You mean stolen? Yeah, sir, that's right. Well, you think someone broke in and stole something and set the fire? No, we're not sure yet. We want you to help us. Oh, boy, that's all I need. A fire with no insurance and robbed with no insurance. My wife's brother-in-law won't ever get off my back and my wife. Mm-hmm. Would you check for us, sir? Yeah, sure thing. Thank you. How much in here? Take something like yours. And what you had was in this here box. I'd rather you wouldn't touch it, though. What's that? I'll open it if you don't mind. Well, it's empty. Everything's gone. Was it pretty expensive? Well, it didn't cost much, if that's what you mean. Uh-huh. Mostly costume jewelry. Her watch was in here, though. She forgot it tonight. Went over to the Crenshaw District window shopping, and I remember her mentioning she left it here. You think anything else is missing in here? Uh, I don't think so, unless maybe my wife's clothes in the closet. And the way that looks, I don't guess you could tell much. What do you think, Tom? Well, I can give it a preliminary check while you're going through the rest of the house and let you know. All right, fine. Want to check the rest of the place for us, Mr. Cap? Oh, yes, sir. All right. Boy, what a night... 
simple guy wanted to steal something, he'd pick a place that had stuff worth listening. Now, here's the kids' room. Oh, look at the mess in here. I just finished painting it last week. Oh. Look at it. Dolls, books all burned. Poor little kids saw that tonight, just cried her eyes up. I don't know. The guy that did this must have had a head full of rocks. Yeah. Christmas ain't far off. I don't know how, but I'll see to it she gets dolls and books. Nice ones. Better than these were. Mm-hmm. Wasn't anything in there, he'd take. No, oh, check the kitchen. Well, right off, I can see he made it for the radio. Had a little portable on the shelf right over there. Wife likes to listen to those daytime programs while she's working. Mm-hmm. Something more to plan for Christmas. What if you have the serial number on the radio by any chance? Uh-uh. Never paying any attention to things like that. Anyway, I got a second hand. It wasn't worth much. It played good, though. Mm-hmm. I'll take good luck. You know it's anything else, Don? Uh, not right offhand. Uh, say, folks, how about a beer? Unless that's stolen, too. No, no, no thank you. Well, that really does it. What's that? Yeah, this ties it off good. He stole a ham. What? A ham weighed 12 pounds and saving it for Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> there that goes a big dinner my wife planned. Well, I guess it's all right if you can laugh about it, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking, maybe I'll have the last laugh at my wife's brother. What's that? He was coming to dinner. Further examination of the kitchen showed that about 20 cans of food had been taken. Angus Taft looked through the rest of the house, but he said he didn't think anything else was missing. Inspector Tom Strader said he was fairly sure there were no clothes in the closet when it burned. Men from the crime lab came out and took pictures of the window and also of the place of origin of the fire. A detail from Leighton French checked the house. Frank and I questioned people in the neighborhood, but none of them had seen or heard anyone around the Taft house before the fire started. Inspector Strader said he would notify our office of all similar house fires. The next night, we got a report from Leighton Prince. They said the prints they'd lifted from the Taft home belonged to members of the family. Ray Pinker sent word over from the crime lab that the marks on the windowsill had been made by a half-inch pry bar. On November 10th, we got another call from Inspector Strader, and we went out to 2725 West 49th Street. By 1026 p.m., we had completed our inspection of the burned interior of the house, and we talked to the owner. That was pretty much like the last one. Looks like more damage this time, though. Yeah. Then there were four different fires started in this house. Uh-huh. Same entry. Bedroom window. Stolen articles just about the same, huh? I don't get that part. How's that, Frank? The stuff is stolen. Not much value to it. Costume jewelry, clothes, food, portable radio. Mm-hmm. You'd think anyone that goes out on a limb like this would try to make it worth his while. Nothing much we can check the usual sources for. Mm-hmm. One thing that might help us we don't have. What's that, Joe? Serial numbers. You know, if people could just give us the numbers on their radios, other stolen property, we'd have something definite to look for. I know it's a lot to ask, but if they could just do that. Inspector, what do you estimate the fire loss to be here? A couple thousand dollars. Uh-huh. I hope your crime lab or Leighton Prince can come up with a lead to give you fellows something concrete to work with. Uh, we'll be there, Tom. What do you think, Joe? Same person? Well, yeah. might be too early to say, but the fires are in the same neighborhood. Similar M.O. Chances are fair that it's the same one, yeah. Uh-huh. Keeps up. Somebody's likely to get hurt. We haven't got too much to go on. Well, we got a place to start. Huh? We know he's got some matches. Frank and I questioned the neighbors, but we failed to get any useful information. Leighton Prince were unable to come up with anything. The crime lab reported the window had been forced by a one-half-inch pry bar. Within the next three weeks, despite our efforts, six more fires and burglaries occurred. In each case, the same M.O. was used. We had sent teletypes to CII and all points requesting information on any person who had used the same M.O. The staff's office had made a run. No arsonists were checked. Pawn shops and second-hand stores were notified, but we still had no definite lead as to the identity of the arsonist burger. We started a pin map to see if a directional trend would develop. 8.57 p.m., Wednesday, December 2nd. We were checking the map with Sergeant Rex Olson. Anything new, Joe? Well, we've had a few burglaries further west. Up in here, but no fire. Mm-hmm. How about the ammo? Same. Bedroom window entry. Same type article stolen. You know, this operator's really a wig. Take a look at this list of items that have been taken. Mm-hmm. Dog food, baby clothes, golf balls, tennis balls, camping equipment, and a phonograph. That's quite an assortment. Tennis balls were initialed, I think, by the owner. He said he could identify them. Details have been checked in playgrounds for him. Mm-hmm. I guess you pretty well covered every angle, then. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's the men from Metro and the fire department have been on stakeouts in areas where fires have occurred. They've run down a lot of leads, but we haven't come up with anything to date. You know, how about Prince? No, haven't been able to give us any positives. 
Well, I guess they're switching MO, something to be thankful for, then. Yeah, with the guy still out breathing the same air as we do. Yeah. I know it bothers you, but you're doing your best. You can't ask for more. Mm-hmm. If you talk to some of these families that have been burned out, and you sure wish you could. Yeah, I know how you feel. The guy isn't satisfied setting one fire in a house. He set as many as six in one place. Look at those red pins. Mm-hmm. How do you Burglary, Olsen. Uh-huh. Well, what's that address? 1904 West 50th Street. Right. Yeah, they're with me now. Yeah. Burglary, here's the address. Right. Anything else? Yeah, another red pen. <laughs> to the address on 50th Street. Like the other homes hit by the arsonist burglar, it was a small one-story house. Inspector Strader showed us where five fires had been started. The main damage was in the rear of the building. Entry had been made through a bedroom window. We called the crime lab in Layton Print. The owner, a Mr. Clinton Bates, arrived and checked for missing property. 10.27 p.m. We came to the living room. Well, right offhand, I'd say nothing was missing in here. Well, sir, it's possible he just didn't take anything from this room. Why do you say that, Sergeant? Well, no fire was started in here. Now, we found in other homes, the burglar usually starts a fire in a room where he takes something. Let's see. Well, Mr. Bates. Yeah? This bottle of perfume that's missing, you said it was initials? That's right. I gave it to my wife for her birthday. It was monogrammed LCB in gold letters. It wasn't really expensive. Mm-hmm. LCB. In fact, nothing that was taken was of too much value. Why should a person go to the trouble of breaking a house to steal comic books? It doesn't make sense. Now, you said your daughter's name was written on the book. Yeah, my wife always writes her name, Carol, on them. You know how kids trade them back and forth. Mm -hmm. My daughter takes after her mother and never wants to throw anything away. I've had over a hundred comic books. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a lot of junk I wish he had taken. And just left the house the way it was without starting the fires. That's how we understand. Now about the coins that were taken. Yeah. This is the first time that any money has been stolen. But what did he take? About two dollars worth of coins. Not much to help you there, is there? Yes, as it might be. They're American coins that can be spent. Now, the fact that they're old may give us a lead if somebody tries to spend them. Mm-hmm. Kind of a long shot, isn't it? Yes, sir, maybe. But this person hasn't given us much choice. Now, do you think you could give us the dates on the coins? Well, I can't, but my wife may be able to. They belong to her. Like I told you, she never gets rid of anything. Mm-hmm. She got them from an aunt a couple, three weeks ago. I told her that since they were old, they might be worth more than just the regular value. Yes, sir. So she took them to some shop, you know, where they handle old money. Man, I told her they weren't in demand, only worth a nickel, dime, whatever it was. I made a change for cigarettes one day, but she wouldn't give them to me. Anything old she hangs on to. Well, you can see the junk around here. Mm-hmm. You think you can get those dates for us? I'll try, but like I said, if the person that did this had just forgot about the fire part and carted off some of the other junk, he'd have been doing me a big favor. Yes, sir, but they don't have that in mind. What do you mean? To help anybody. We got the description and the dates of the coins from Mrs. Bates. All officers were given the information. From our pin map, we figured our suspect might live near Cimarron Street and Vernon Avenue. We spent several days contacting all the businesses in that vicinity and gave each owner a complete description of the coin. We asked them to get the license number or address of any person that might pass them and to call us right away. In the meantime, Leighton Prince sent word from the window ledge at the home of the last burglary and fire that they had lifted several clean prints. Five days went by. Monday, December 7th. A store owner called us regarding the coin. Frank and I drove out to the corner of Cimarron Street and 43rd Place, a small neighborhood variety store. Bernie, can I help you? Police officer. Are you out? Yes, ma'am. We went to see you the other day. Oh, well, just a moment till I get my glasses on. They're trying a new glass cleaner on them just before you came in. I don't see much without them anymore. There. Oh, Siri, now I remember you. You came in about the old money. Yes, ma'am, that's right. We got your call. Well, it's a good thing I had my glasses on about an hour ago. What do you mean, ma'am? When I got those coins. Otherwise, maybe I wouldn't have noticed. Then you took in some money answering the description we gave you, did you? A first customer this morning. I guess maybe that fire took particular notice. Mm-hmm. I called the number on the card you gave me right away. Well, it was very cooperative of you, ma'am. Only doing my duty as I see it. You men are trying to uphold the law, and as a citizen, I feel it's my job to help you. Any way I can. Yes, ma'am. I wonder if we might see the coins. Okie dokie, I'll get them for you. Thank you. When I saw that they were that old money, like you told me about, I just put them in the register. Oh, no. I popped them into this jelly box. I keep pins in, see? Uh huh. Maybe I'd better dump them out on the table. All right, fine. I didn't want you to cook your fingers. It's easy to get blood poisoning. Mm hmm. You got that list, Frank? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Here you go. Are they the ones you're looking for? Just a minute here. Let me check. Yes, ma'am. Oh, how wonderful. Well, that gives me a real fine feeling. 
Like I've done a good deed for the day. Well, you have, ma'am. Now, maybe you can help us even more and tell us about the person that gave you these. Thank you, Dorothy. I can. But there's something I don't quite understand. What's that, ma'am? I thought you policemen are generally looking for a real bad man. No, not always. Well, that's what seems wrong. The person I got these from couldn't be the one you want. Why do you say that? It was a little girl about nine years old. <laughs> told us that when the little girl had left, he'd followed her to a house about three blocks away. We gave her a receipt for the coins and drove over to 2216 West 43rd Place, the address he'd given us. Frank drove past the house slowly, and we saw a 1940 Plymouth sedan parked in the driveway. On the second trip, I got the license number of the vehicle. We called the office, and they sent out another team to stake out the place. We went back to the office and called DMV. They gave us the name Lyndon Granger as the legal owner. We checked the name through r and and found that he had five arrests for burglary as a juvenile. We called Leighton Prince and asked them to check the fingerprints found at the house on 50th Street. 10.37 a.m. When are they going to call? As soon as they have time to check them thoroughly, I guess. I was just thinking, Joe, what happens if things are isn't our boy? Well, I think it's kind of easy to figure, don't you? Huh? Sure. Find out where the girl got the coins. Yeah, well, I was thinking about that. You know what that could mean? Mm-hmm. More footwork. But I'm telling you, Joe, I haven't put on so many miles since I worked traffic. You don't have to tell me. What do you mean? All these miles you're talking about. Oh, yeah. I was with you, remember? Yeah. yeah. I know, Joe, but after all, I'm carrying a few more pounds than you are. That is correct. It makes a big difference. Mm-hmm. You know how it is when you go deer hunting? No, sir, Frank, I don't. I never go. Well, when you're carrying a rifle. Never carry one. Well, when you go deer hunting and you do carry a rifle, you start out in the morning, the rifle doesn't weigh much at all. It doesn't. Huh? No. I mean, it doesn't feel so heavy, but along toward the end of the day... And those few pounds feel like 20. Mm-hmm. That's the way it is with the extra pounds I carry around. Mm-hmm. Burglary Friday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see. On two of them. Hmm. Good. Right. Thank you. Clayton Prince? Yeah. Granger's Prince. Uh-huh. They made them on the last job. <laughs> The fact that Granger's prince tied him in with the last fire burglary was enough to get a complaint, but we wanted an airtight case. We decided to follow the suspect that night. Another team was set out to relieve the stake out on his home. When Granger left the house at 8.09 p.m., Frank and I were behind him. The other team remained at the house. We followed him for about an hour. 9.13 p.m. What do you think, Joe? Stick with him. All right. We better take him away from home before he and his wife can get together on our story, huh? Yeah. He's slowing down. I'll pull over. Stop. Can you see him? Yeah. That looks like another twist in his operation. Stealing from that car. Yeah. What did he take? Could you see? A blanket or a robe of some kind. Come on, let's get him. All right. Officers? Ah. Yeah. Right. Get your hands behind your back now. Oh, I didn't hear you too good. I wouldn't have taken off if I'd known you was cops. That's the truth. If I was you, I'd believe that. That's so? Well, I'm just going to feel terrible if you guys don't believe me. Well, now, that's too bad. Huh? We don't. We questioned Granger, but he refused to admit any knowledge of the burglaries or the fires. We met the other team on stakeout, and they took him into custody while we went in to talk to his wife. We identified ourselves, and she told us to come in. Shut up, Fortune. Be quiet. Don't worry about him. He won't bite. Dog's no good for anything except to eat and sleep. My wife didn't take him with him tonight. What's that, ma'am? My husband goes out just about every night and takes the dog with him. Not tonight. He's under my feet every minute. Is anybody else in this house besides you? Huh? Are you alone here? Yes, yeah, except for that mutt. Why? Well, you don't mind if we look around, do you? Did you believe me? We have to check. Shoot. You have to. I ain't hiding nobody. Go ahead. I'll check it, Joe. Come on. You want to sit down, Miss Ranger? Why? You going to be here first, girl? A few things we have to ask you. Huh? Get up, Fortune. Um, what do you want to ask? What kind of work does your husband do? He's a window washer. 
Well, who's his employer? Nobody. But does he work for a business concern of any kind? You mean like a store? That's right. Yeah, but he watches windows for people, too. You know, it has it. Mm-hmm. John? Yeah? I found this on the dresser in the bedroom. Hey, what are you doing with my perfume? This belong to you? Well, he took it out of my room, didn't he? Where'd you get it? My husband. Did he say where he got it? Yeah, all-night market. How about these initials here? L.C.B. Well, sure, that's why I got the chief. He said they were closing them out. Your husband goes out every night, doesn't he? Yeah. Has he brought other things home from this same market? Why, yes. Just tell us, have you? Yeah. What? Something wrong? Did he do something? What other things did he bring home? I don't think I'll tell you. Oh, well, that's up to you, Miss Granger. It would be a lot better for you if he told us the truth. How about what? The things your husband has brought home. I thought there was something wrong, but he said he got them at the market. Mm hmm. Did he steal them? We think he did, yeah. Makes sense. Seems to, darling. I was thinking of the perfume. I thought it's funny he'd spend money like that. He doesn't think that much of me. What's that? He thinks more of that dog than he does of me. Gave me the perfume, and the next day he put most of it on fortune. How's that? The dog. He put most of the perfume on the dog. He got close and he still smell it. Look at that collar. Pretty, isn't it? All jewels. Bet he didn't steal that. Not for his dog. What else did he bring home? Food, clothes, magazines, all kinds of things. Where are they? The food we ate. Other stuff. I don't know for sure. Some of it's in the garage. Do you want to show us? All right. We can go out the front door to the car. All right. Do you have any children, Miss Granger? No. Pretty dark. Get my flashlight. Do you know if your husband's had any old coins recently? Yeah. Gave them to me. Two pennies, a couple of dimes, a quarter. I remember because it's the only money he's given me a long time. You still them, too? Looks like it. Oh, there's a key on the left side of the door. Hang on in there. Yeah, like that. You still have those coins? No, I, I sent the neighbor girl to the store for me today. That was the only money I had. She sent them. Lights on the left side. Thanks. Hmm. Comic books. What was that name, Joe? Carol. Yeah, text right down the line. This camping equipment. Is this something you got at that market, too? Yeah, I guess so. We never bought any, I can remember. Wouldn't be any reason. He'd never take me camping. Do you know what's in this box? No. Do you know where the key is for the lock? No. Guess it happened. Let me give you that hammer. Yeah. You gonna break the lock? Yeah. Here you are. Watches, costume, jewelry. Yeah. Tennis ball, a couple of coins, half dollars. Mm-hmm. You mean my husband stole all these things? Yeah, it seems so, Miss Granger, but that's not the worst of it. Oh, no. In several of the homes, we think he set fires. That mean I'm guilty, too? No, ma'am, not necessarily. Not if you didn't know about it. I didn't know. He never told me. Mm-hmm. I'm not about him. Then it's not to me. Mm-hmm. You come in here and say my husband's a thief? You know it like this? That's... Not easy to take. Well, there's one other thing, Miss Granger. What? Not easy to say. The story you've just heard is true. The name was retained to protect the innocent. On March 9th, trial was held in Department 98, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. <laughs> Lyndon Frederick Granger was tried and convicted of burglary in the first degree, five counts, and of arson, four counts. He received sentence as prescribed by law. Burglary in the first degree is punishable by imprisonment for a period of not less than five years. Arson is punishable by imprisonment for a period of from two to 20 years in the state penitentiary. Just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the Office of Chief of Police, W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors, Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Van Brasher. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Walter Sandy, Jack Crucian, Virginia Gregg. Script by John Robinson, Earl Slade. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. 
watch an entirely different Dragnet case history each week on your local NBC television station. Please check your newspapers for the day and time. 